Today I want to talk about something that really should be standard best practice for all Oracle databases, and that's about compiling your PL SQL. Now, when stored PL SQL was first introduced back with release 7, the mechanism was to compile the code to machine code executable within the PL SQL virtual machine. The detail of that, your PL SQL code gets converted first into what is called Diana code. Diana code is a representation of the code after all the semantic checks, object resolution, um, checking permissions. It's code that's known to be good. That then gets compiled to M code, machine code. But the M code is runnable only by the PL SQL virtual machine. It isn't compiled into instructions that would run on, say, an Intel chip or a Spark chip. It will only run in the PL SQL virtual machine. And that M code gets stored within the data dictionary. Then at runtime, when the users invoke the code, the M code has to be what people will often call interpreted, converted into machine specific calls, because the instruction set for your Intel chip is not the same as the instruction set for your Spark chip or your PowerPC chip. And that work of converting the generic M code into machine specific code occurs at runtime. This is exactly the same model that Java uses. In the same way that Java is compiled to a JVM, and then the JVM is specific to the machine and runs the code in a particular machine, same thing with PL SQL. The alternative is native compilation. This was first introduced in release nine, and it was pretty awkward in release nine, but in later releases, it's very straightforward to do. The Diana code is converted into M code, exactly the same as before, but there's an extra step. The M code is converted into C. The C is then compiled into a dynamically linked, linkable shared library, into a DLL. And the DLL is what ends up being stored in the data dictionary. At runtime, there is no machine-specific translation needed. The code is there, ready to run, and it can be dynamically linked into the Oracle executables. This is what one would normally call a head-of-time compilation rather than just-in-time compilation. So what's the benefit? It's performance. Many operations, I've mentioned some here on the slide, looping, mathematics, any sort of string or date manipulation, will all be far faster with the code that's directly linked in the Oracle executables. A couple of provisos. Uh, quite a lot of the Oracle packages are already written in C. Things like UTL file, for instance, are already in C, so you won't get any benefits with compiling them. It's been done already. And for the SQL invoked by your PL SQL, again, there's no benefits there. SQL still has to be dynamically parsed. But the PL SQL itself will be a lot faster. It's very simple. In release 9, it was awkward. There was a whole series of parameters you had to set. You had to tell or Oracle, where your C compiler was, where your make utility was, where to store the DLLs, because back in release 9 they were stored as operating system files, which caused real problems in the rack environment. But from 11G and 12C, it's much more straightforward. Oracle is supplying a C compiler and a make utility, so everything is done internally within the database, and you end up with dynamic link libraries stored in the data dictionary. And to set this up is simply one parameter change.